hey there welcome back to the channel thank you so much for tuning in if you're new here you're welcome thanks for clicking on this video first and foremost i send my condolences to those who lost their loved ones during the protest may god console you all i've been receiving some messages some dms people asking especially my nigerian friends they are like what's up what's going on um after that video we didn't hear from you again we need to know what is actually happening i also got some messages from some kenyans even in the previous video some persons requesting that i compare the intense protest in nigeria and this protest that happened in kenya i also got a message of someone saying um nigerians are only interested in eating rice in Davido and Choma's wedding party. And I'm like, okay, okay, uh, I need to address this. We need to get some facts right. Not just that, I've seen a lot of video flying up and down on the internet, people mocking Nigerians and saying that they are lazy. They're only interested in dancing and singing and enjoying themselves, making caricature of themselves, you know, debating, arguing, and all of that. I'm a Nigerian, and I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be reacting. <laughs> Most of these people that are mocking, funny enough, majority of them are Nigerians saying these things anyway let me not rush this just stay with me so this video is going to be in two sections i'm going to summarize what actually happened what did the president say what did he do did they take actions and all of that and i'm going to be addressing this other part of people wanting to know what exactly is the reason why can't nigerians take back their country from these corrupt leaders what exactly is happening are they really lazy are they cowards are they um just too relaxed are they complacent we are going to find out what exactly is the challenge. Okay. So, in summary, um, during the protests, <laughs> Kenyans, Kenyans, I always call them, I say, aka Cruise Nation. You could see that hey. even the water cannons that they were using on them that were playing on that. Even the anything. tear gas that they were throwing at them. So, people yeah, threw yeah. it, fired it back to send that. They even choked some officers in the process. At a point, the police were overpowered. They entered the parliament. Some persons took the mace. And I learned that without the mace, it's impossible to pass a law. Some people were eating. They meant business. Mr. Speaker, I also saw another member of parliament from the National Assembly who is a wheelchair user who voted yes to the finance bill, also having been separated from his team and his aides and bodyguard. He was stranded, Mr. Speaker, couldn't run, couldn't hide in his wheelchair. And you know what happened when those kids entered this premises? Three young boys saw this member of parliament who voted yes for the finance bill. And instead of reprimanding him, they actually carried this member of parliament in his wheelchair to the tunnel so that he can go and seek refuge across in Bunge Towers. And then the three boys ran back and joined their fellow comrades. Even in public gatherings, those MPs that voted yes, they were booed in public. Some even went as far as, you know, wanting to engage them physically. That was how far these guys went. Like, they meant business. Now, the president realized that this was turning into anarchy. And if care is not taken, if he doesn't come out to address this, there will be problem in the country and aside that some organizations were threatening to leave some companies they were threatening to leave you know people were no longer coming into the country they were scared because of the unrest happening in kenya some i even watched the video and i saw how the airport was jammed tourists trying to leave the country and all so it got to that point that the president just had to come and address this and yes he did he conceded. So I'm going to be playing the video shortly so that we listen to what he said. I concede. And therefore, I will not sign the 2024 finance bill. And it shall subsequently be withdrawn. And I have agreed with these members that that becomes our collective position. And I am therefore proposing that because we have gotten rid of the finance bill 2024, it is necessary for us to have a conversation as a nation 
going forward. I will be proposing an engagement with the young people of our nation. Listen to their views, listen to their proposals, their ideas, their concerns, and what they think we should do better as we go forward. To the mothers, fathers, siblings, relatives, and friends of those who lost their lives, my deepest sympathies and condolences to you all. Equally, to the many others who are injured and recuperating, I wish them quick recovery. The government of Kenya will support all those who've lost their lives and those who've been injured. The following actions shall be taken with immediate effect towards the realization of the new budget. 47 state corporations with overlapping and duplicating functions will be dissolved. The number of advisors in government shall be reduced by 50% within the public service with immediate effect. Budget lines providing for the operations of the office of the first lady, the spouse of the deputy president, and the prime cabinet secretary will be removed. Similarly, the budget, the budget provisions for confidential budgets in various executive offices, including my own office, have been removed and the budget for renovations across government reduced by 50%. The purchase of new motor vehicles by the government is suspended for 12 months, except for security agencies. All non-essential travel by state and public officers is hereby suspended. No state officer or public servant shall participate in public contributions or haram phase going forward. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless our great country, Kenya. We went for that to have an online ex meeting with the Gen Z's. Like they really engaged some people, were pouring out their hearts. It made some Africans proud of him because, number one, he was ready to give them a listening ear. He made amends. And not just that, he wanted to engage with them. Like he wanted to communicate directly with the citizens. You know, when these people are going to look for votes, they communicate, they engage directly with the citizens. So when there's a challenge, it is appropriate that they also come out and engage with the citizens directly. And this was what he did. He was ready to make amends. He listened to them. And, you know, they had that conversation going. And then some Africans are also saying that other African leaders, presidents, governors, senators, ministers should adopt this method as well to listen to the people that they represent. After all, these are the people that put them in position. These are the people that voted them. Ladies and gentlemen, after all was said and done, some Kenyans were still not happy some kenyans were still not appeased you know the way you appease the gods they were not excited they said no we won't accept any apologies we want you to go it's time to go and then there are this other group of kenyans that are saying why would you want him to go he was elected okay if you don't want him to be the president wait for 2027 then you can cast your votes and vote him out. After all, votes count in Kenya, okay? People are saying they don't want unrest, they don't want anarchy, they don't want instability in Kenya. They love their home country. So if you're not happy, wait for 2027. The president has tried. He has done his best. He has come online to engage with people. He has apologized. He said actions will be taken. Like, what else do you want from him? What is it? Haven't you done enough? <laughs> anyway, let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section. Moving on, some Kenyans also said that they don't think that this is about the finance bill anymore. They feel that this protest has been hijacked by politicians who want to overthrow the government. Again, let me know your thoughts about this in the comment section. So, Kenyans... Draw your seats closer. Nigerians, draw your seats closer. Let us have a conversation. I'm going to be telling you some of the reasons why it was successful, why this protest was successful, why this protest yielded results in Kenya. And I'm also going to be comparing it, relating it to the NSAS protest, why it wasn't successful, 
why it didn't yield much results i'm going to be explaining all of that nigeria can never be compared to kenya kenya is way advanced and i'm going to be explaining what i mean stay with me calm down calm down i'm going to explain what i mean i want us to keep sentiments aside i want us to keep emotions aside and be logical in this video okay yeah so let's just delve into it the first reason why the Kenya Gen Z protest was successful was because they overcame tribal bigotry and religious fanatism or extremism. Now, I watched videos of the protest and I was amazed at what I saw. The unity was something else. You could see that the Muslims, they were there, like those people that were choking as a result of the takers. You could see them giving them water, you know, just, they were just there. They were all out to support. Even the mocks, like they opened their doors to the protesters. That is why I say it would be very unjust to compare these two countries because Number one, again, you need to know that majority of Kenyans are Christians as compared to Nigeria where you find that it's almost like a 50-50%. That religion is always a barrier. I was shocked when I heard this from a Kenyan. She said she happened to school in, she's a Christian, but she schooled in a Muslim boarding school. I don't know if it makes sense. She went to a Muslim boarding school, and in that school, there were few Christians. But guess what? They were given the privilege to still practice their religion, despite being in a Muslim school. She said every Friday when they assemble, that there is always a representative that will pray both the Muslim prayer and someone else to take the Christian prayer. Mind you, that is a Muslim school. Again, can that happen in Nigeria? You go to a Muslim school and you're given an opportunity to pray the Christian prayers in a Muslim school. She also said that she was privileged to go to a Catholic school. In that Catholic school, there happened to be Muslims, like few Muslims. Guess what they did? They created a room for the few Muslims to go pray. Like that room is dedicated for prayers. I was shocked when I read this write-up from that Kenyan. Let me tell you a story. I went to a girls' boarding school. You know, now there's a period they call agro. When you just say agro period, just know that it's a period that most students get broke, like everything just gets ex exhausted. So you need to replenish it maybe during visiting days when your parents come to visit you or your guidance. So that period, like it was agro period, and I didn't have detergent, I needed to wash my uniform. Guess what? I reached out to a Muslim girl at that time. We are girls. Yeah, I was even very petite, short and petite. So I reached out to her and I was like, please can you assist me with detergent so that I can wash my uniform? And guess what this girl said? She said no, that where she's coming from, her family, her mom, her dad has already told her to avoid unbelievers. Now, unbelievers, what she meant was people that don't believe in what she believes. So that was what she said. And thinking about it now, I'm like, okay, at that young age, imagine being indoctrinated. Imagine being told this thing. If this person grows up, if this person is not open-minded, that person is going to be a fanatic. I found this very strange. So I had to ask another Muslim girl, like, is this how it's done? Like people don't want to associate with unbelievers, people that don't believe in what you believe in. And she was like, yes, that even she, where she's coming from, she was told not to associate with unbelievers. That is we Christians. And I'm like, Phew. in fact, she even went on to say that it's like haram. It's like haram, more like a taboo to do that. And I was like, wow, okay. Now, it's not just only in Islam. Even in the Christendom, you find preachers of the word of God. They tell you, oh, do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. What has light got to do with darkness? 
is it the same bible that we read because the jesus that we are worshiping the jesus that we're serving this same jesus when he was on earth he associated with the so-called sinners he associated with the so-called unbelievers the pharisees and the sadducees came and started mocking him you say you are the messiah you're associated with these unbelievers you're drinking and you're dining and this is the same jesus we are talking about so you can see that division is already there like the muslims are saying don't associate yourself the christians are saying don't associate yourself our major challenge in nigeria is tribalism and religion if you can get rid of these two things i assure you i assure you we will take back our country god loves kenya so much and he made the president make this decision that affected everybody i mean everybody it affected everybody it affected men it affected women it affected children in fact it affected the youth it affected the aged it, it affected the healthy it affected the sick i'm talking about part diapers tax on land tax on content creators tax on vegetable oil tax on bread and so on tax on cancer treatments it affected everybody so it wasn't a case of oh it, it's not affecting me oh it, it affected everybody especially the gen z's content creation that is their source of livelihood man you don't want to tax it everybody was affected by that finance bill. everybody nobody was exempted and hope you know that this is not the first protest in Kenya. You know, even after the election, the presidential election, you know, some people were not happy with the results and they went on the streets and started protesting. They were like, open the server and all. But it didn't yield any results. Why? Because there was division. Even when they were protesting, like <laughs> after they got tired, everybody went back. But this one, it affected everybody. So they had no choice than to unite and fight the common enemy, which is the finance bill these genzies they mobilize themselves online like it started like a joke online and <laughs> before you say jack robbie they're already on the streets it was successful because they were tribeless they were partyless they were leaderless <laughs> if there's anything like that they were religionless they were orderless that was why it was successful they identified as kings they didn't identify as any tribe. They didn't identify as any party. They didn't identify as any religion. They had no leader. That was why it was successful. So it was organic. Even police officers had their loved ones on the streets protesting. Even politicians had their loved ones, both the ones that are for Ruto and the ones that are against, they had their loved ones on the streets protesting. It was organic. That was why it was successful. Another reason why it was successful is because Kenyans know so much about their country. Kenyans know their history. I happened to conduct an interview on the streets of Abuja and I was amazed. I asked some Nigerians if they can name countries in East Africa. And to my amazement, I heard some people mentioning Dubai. Yes, I'm not exaggerating. Somebody mentioned USA. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I asked a student towards the end of the interview. I asked the student. And she was just mentioning some countries. And I was like, why? What's happening? Were you not taught history in school? And she said, no, that it was actually scrapped. That's the reason why most people don't know so much about the country. Most people don't know about the continent, Africa. Kenyans, they are being taught history in their school. They know little, little about other African countries. They read, okay? They are inquisitive. They want to learn. They are curious. They want to know so much about Africa. They, want, they are interested in knowing about their country. Now, in Nigeria, history was scrapped. Reason best known to the politicians. Okay, it's intentional. Let's not even play dump. Reasons best known to them. Okay. Now that we know that this is it, we know very we know you and I we know why they scrapped history in school. You and I we know. 
you will make efforts to know about your continent. You will make efforts to know about your history. Most people, they don't even know any. If I ask some people now, name five countries in East Africa, some people don't know. Even as we are talking right now, some people don't know. They know little or nothing about their continent. So we need to do better. Especially this generation, the millennials and the Gen Zs. <laughs> We're not here to condemn anybody. This is just a wake up call that if we want Nigeria to forge ahead, if we want Nigeria to be liberated, we want to be liberated, we need to put in the work. We need to know about our history. And you'll be amazed at the findings. So that was one of the factors that made them successful during the protest. They know their rights, they know how corruption damages a country. They were all out to make things right so at this point my microphone battery died and i needed to convey this message that's why i'm doing this voice over so another reason why the protest was successful in kenya was because of the low rate of illiteracy kenyans are highly educated i can't even stress this point enough i'm not saying nigerians are not educated come on nigerians are educated but i'm telling you that in kenya is more like it's leveled do you get it's not as if a certain region is so educated then you go to this other region you find high rate of illiteracy like no it's it's kind of leveled i don't know if you get what i'm saying yeah so they are high, highly educated and like i said because of their very inquisitive even the ones that are not learned they want to know they are they are willing to know they are open to learn do you get so i made a video some time back and i talked about how a nigerian friend of mine we used the matatu and this girl was like i want to come down i want to come down <laughs> i'm coming down here i'm coming down here and then the conductor was now like oh you mean you want to highlight and that's a conductor that's to tell you that kenyans even the ones that you're seeing doing conductors the ones selling in the markets they are learning they can speak english I learned that even the Somalis, that is the Muslims, when they had this issue in their country, when there was unrest in their country, they migrated to Kenya as a result of that. They were forced, I learned that they were forced by the Kenyan government to go to school. Now that I, I learned they even have colleges and universities in their county, I, I think they have, a, they have like two or three counties. That's because Kenya value education they know the importance of education they know that if we don't educate these people tomorrow they might become something else they might give us headache that is why they took it upon themselves to make sure that these people are learned to make sure that they go to school to make sure that they are educated now that's one of the problems we are facing in nigeria you go to nigeria you see a certain part high rate of illiteracy is the order of the day the northern part of nigeria and the funny thing is that these northerners oh my god i remember in secondary school um i was in jesus one and this girl in ss3 she is okay i can't say was she is a house they call them house sapulani she's a house sapulani girl i'll never forget her name is zule katu this girl is highly intelligent so intelligent during a um, prize giving day when they were graduating from secondary to university she was the best in almost all the subjects before she goes to her seat they've called best in so 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 subject they will call her name best in at a point they told her please don't go back to your seat just stand and get all your prize that is how intelligent these people are even in university the house has the food these people are intelligent but they lack the opportunity our problem is not one in nigeria so all of you always comparing saying nigeria see it will take the mercies of god and people always say prayer is not like prayer is very important it will take the mercy of god to 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 reconstruct and rearrange our brain i'm telling you because we have a long way to go we have a long way to go it will take only the mercy of god to restructure our brain to reset that brain 
to factory setting so that we begin to do the right thing so how will they know their rights how will they know that it's important to fight against corruption how will they know all these things they cannot know they they've not seen the four walls of a school that's why you from the north i'm, I'm also from the north but we are called North Central. So if you're from the North and you have opportunity of meeting these people, or you have been privileged enough to go to school, when you go back, take it upon yourself to educate your community. Tell them the importance, the importance of knowing their history, the importance of wanting good governance, because these people have gotten to a point that they are used to hardship. They are used to hardship. So what do you want to tell them tomorrow? What do you want to? They are used to hardship. They are used to that slave servant and pattern. Do you get? So it's a big challenge. It's really a big challenge in Nigeria. You see why it's difficult for us to be liberated. Anyway, that is it. Another thing is President Ruto, the president of Kenya, is a young man. He's learned. Whether I like it or not, this is one part that people don't know. That man is a seasoned politician. That man is in... I know some people will, 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 will argue. That man is a seasoned... That man is intelligent. I'm telling you. I'm telling you guys for free. <laughs> that man is a dangerous politician. I'm telling you. He read the handwriting on the wall. He knew when to take a U-turn. He knows, he knows. Let's even talk about what happened during the NSAS protest. Can that be said about our leaders? Look at what happened. Hundreds of people in 2020, they were deleted. As I'm speaking to you guys now, some are still in prison. Nigerian youths tried their best. So let nobody even come and rubbish your sacrifice. Let nobody come and look down and gererize your efforts. You've tried it's so many factors hindering us from breaking free. So many factors. We've tried. He tried their best. For the first time, I saw unity. I saw you. You needed to see some people that had money. They were providing drinks. Some people were cooking, you know, providing food. Unity. Even the artists, they came just to so that they don't get bored or tired or exhausted. You see some artists, they came, they performed. But you know what? It wasn't successful. Why? It was targeted against police brutality and not against the government. Can you see? So some people were like, oh, it's not my business. I've never had issue. I've never been harassed by police. So why should I be on the streets? It wasn't, it wasn't something that affected everybody. This is the reason why it wasn't successful. We all know what happened. At the end, it ended in tears. Again, Nigeria had an opportunity to change the narrative during the presidential election. Nigerian youths became politicians. Even people that were not interested in politics, like they were watching the news back to back. They were interested because they needed, they desperately needed change. People that have never voted in their life, they, were, they struggled to get the voter's card. They were frustrated, but they went all out. They say lie, yeah. they say lie, lie. We must get this voters card. Under the sun and in the rain, people, people struggled to get their voters card. I don't even want to go into details how, how some people were frustrated and couldn't even get their voters card and all. Nigerians tried, you guys. You guys see the problem in Nigeria is not one. It's not one. That's why we need you. We need our African brothers to help us. Help if you cannot help us in it, help us in prayers. We need prayers. I've never in my entire life seen such a turnout and determination during election. I've never. You need to see these people. I was out there with my camera filming. I was even asking questions and all. I went to the to the polling units. They went early. After voting, they waited. They said, no, we must wait and count our votes. People that had money, they were supplying drinks. They were supply, supplying food to people that were behind, waiting to count their votes. What is it that Nigerians did not do? Again, Nigerians didn't succeed. Why? tribalism 
religious fanatism. There was ballot snatching, threats, rigging, name it, all manner of things. Some people lost their lives because they needed a change. Nigerians in diaspora had to travel down to Nigeria just to vote. Because it's not like Kenya that even when you are, you are abroad, you can always cast your vote and it will count. No. They traveled down just to vote. Even pastors, that period, pastors were vocal. For example, like um, um, Dunamis pastor, Dr. Pastor Paul Nature, he was vocal about it. Some people were coming against him. Some Christians themselves, some of his members were coming for him. That he's a man of God, he should leave politics. When Tinibu was eventually declared the winner, Nigerians in diaspora, they protested. The adults cried. I saw adults crying like babies. I saw a video of a man in diaspora. He said, I've given up. I've given up the last opportunity we had to change this nation. I saw this man cried, cry like a baby. Tore his Nigerian passport out of frustration. Petitions were written. People went to the highest court to reclaim the stolen mandate. All to no avail. You know the reason now. Reason, tribalism, religion, greed. Till date, as I'm speaking to you, despite these hardships, some people are, <laughs> they are still in love and rooting for these governments. They are diehard fans of Jagaban. If only there was unity, Nigeria will fight until the last drop of their blood. Nigerians are not weaklings. Nigerians are not cowards. We are talking about fearless Igbos here. Igbos. Have you heard of Ninja Delta? Even the houses, rugged, the Edos, the thieves, the Igalas. Nigerians are not cowards. If they can smell unity, I tell you, you'll be amazed at what will happen in that country. The issue now is nobody wants to fight a lost battle and get deleted on the surface of this earth for nothing. That is why you see people folding their hands that is why you see people sitting on their hands they are not ready to take a step some nigerians got exhausted and started leaving the country now we know it as a uh, jackpa it was nicknamed aka jackpa to escape people are asking nigerians why are you leaving your country who will fight for you haven't they fought it is it only everybody that is in nigeria before you people understand that some things need to be sorted out. It's not all about protest. Some things need to be sorted for this protest to actually work in Nigeria. Most people are traumatized. They need fresh environment to reset their brain. Their brain is hot. They need to think. They need to, they need to think straight. They need to protect their mental health. Even me as I am, like, you know, at, at a point, I, I, I will just sit down like this. I will just be thinking. I'll just be hissing. I'll just be getting angry because of the happenings. If you are not watching about it in on news, you are seeing people come lamenting. If you are not seeing people lamenting, you are seeing it practically. You are seeing how people are suffering right in front of your eyes, and there's little or nothing you can do about it. How depressing it can be. At a point, my chest, my chest started paining me. I was like, what? This is my young age. I <laughs> God, I beg. I'm not even married. I don't even have any child. I'll not die. I cannot die before my time. God forbid. And some people are dancing on TikTok. They are getting busy. They need to laugh away their sorrows. They need to laugh away their sorrows. Some Nigerians are actually looking for peace of mind. It's not everywhere that go to developed countries. It's not everywhere that are going to all these countries because they want to hustle or anything. Some people are looking for peace of mind. That's why you go to some places very interior villages you find nigerians the nigerians are everywhere they don't go because they want a new environment they want to explore they want to start businesses they are everywhere so don't get it twisted and say eh, nigerians are here because the country is developed nigerians love to no 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 don't get it twisted okay don't get it twisted even in poor countries you find them there Another stereotype, Nigerians are into illegal. It's not every Nigerian that is into illegal businesses. Please, let's stop generalizing. The other day, I was carried by a Boda Boda guy speaking Swahili. But uh, when you meet your brother, you know now. Nah. 
from the accent you will, you will catch them that was how i realized that this man is actually in nigeria doing boda boda business so you see he's not even nigerian that he's proud he humbled himself he left this country humbled himself to come and serve he refused to go the wrong way he refused to do illegal business the other day i went with someone i went with a nigerian when i was in nairobi i went with a nigerian to get some nigerian food stuff and they also sell food that's the cooked food and this guy came he was speaking he was advertising his wristwatch to us he was speaking swahili i was like i don't understand swahili speak english and I, oh no i'm just saying that i sell wristwatch i sell glasses i'm like oh okay okay and then the next minute i saw this guy eating fufu and uh, a goosey soup I was not just with my friend gossiping. I was like, ah, so even Kenyans, they love Nigerian food. I was speaking in pidgin. This guy heard us. He was not like, ah, he spoke in pidgin as well. He said, Abi Nanjao, I am from so state to I'm not a Kenyan. This man has integrated speaking Swahili, fluent Swahili, and hustling. So all this uh, narrative, pushing this narrative, eh, Nigerians are into illegal business, blah, blah, blah. Please, let's be gracious. Nigerians have gone through a lot. Let's be gracious with our words. Let's not be mean when we see our fellow Africans. I trust Kenyans. Kenyans are nice people. They are welcoming people. But I'm talking about other African countries. Please, let's not be mean to our fellow Africans. Let's be there for them in this trying moment. Nigeria will rise again. It might take time, but it will surely happen. Not everyone will leave Nigeria. Let me assure you. Most people, even as we are speaking, despite the hardship, and some people, if you even give them passport, oh yeah, you give them visa. Travel abroad, they will tell you no, because they love their country. Millions of people are still in Nigeria. Millions will continue to remain in Nigeria. Millions will refuse to leave Nigeria. When the time comes, they will fight for that change. So you should stop asking who will fight. Nigerians in diaspora, they will come home and fight. Okay? So, yeah. Another thing is, some people are saying that the best option is for Nigeria to be divided. Let me just tell you, forget it. Point blank, forget it. Politicians will not let that happen, number one. Number two, I feel God brought us together for a reason. Everybody is important. Look at the Igbos. Look at what is happening in Abba. Very creative people. When you talk about China is no clue. If only they had the support needed. I tell you, even China. China is not close to them. If the government gives them that support they need, I'm telling you, you'd be amazed. Or oh, is it the Europe as the intellectuals, the professionals, the doctors? intelligent people even the middle belt the northerners agriculture food basket of the nation fruits vegetables food what are you looking for then you go to the southern part of nigeria minerals oil what are you looking for? we have it all in it fair god brought us together for a reason i don't feel separation is the best is the best way to go if you ask me the truth is that we are always clamoring for, eh, we, want, we want to separate, we want to separate. Do you know that even Benue State, <clears throat> Benue State was merged. In Benue State, you find the thieves, you find the Igede, you find the Doma. Igalas, there was a tribe called Igala. They were in Benue State. They, they couldn't live together. They couldn't live together, so they splitted. The Igalas now have a state called Kogi State. Now they have a Biras. And then the Igalas and the Ebiras, which is the minority, they are still having clash. Just the way thieves were having clash with the Igalas. Now the Igalas have gone to their own state. They are still having clash. So I'm still telling you people, separation is not the best. This is an unpopular opinion. I know many people now agree with what I'm saying. There is the fact. This is an unpopular opinion. Even the Igbos, they say, Biafra, Biafra, we want to live together. You think living together is the solution? Let me ask you, do you people love yourself? Have you gotten rid of envy, jealousy, selfishness, greed, pride, ego? Name it. Have you people gotten rid of all these things? So, the best thing that can happen to us is just for us to unite. That is the only way. That is the only way. 
And this can happen when we keep on talking, when we keep on praying. A time will come. Is it not in Kenya that uh, their president made one decision that affected everybody? A time will come. Those politicians, they will make a, deci they will make a decision that will affect everybody. Everybody. And everybody will have no choice. We have no choice than to stand up and face our fears. When we face our fears, they lose their power. Keep educating people, all those illiterate. Keep telling them the need for a good governance, why it's important. Okay? And another thing, no Nigerian is more Nigerian than the other. We didn't choose to be born into the family we find ourselves. We didn't choose to be an Igbo man or an Igbo woman or a Yoruba lady. I didn't choose to be a thief girl. We found ourselves there. I didn't choose to be a Christian. You didn't choose to be a Muslim. So no Nigerian should be more Nigerian than the other. And yes, we keep on complaining colonialism. Well, our problem started during the amalgamation of the Northern and the Southern Protectorate. Blah, 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 blah. It's been over years of independence. It's time for us to arise. It's time for us to arise. Enough of excuses. We need to unite as one and get our country back. You see Esau in the Bible. He said, Esau, you will forever become Jacob's slave if you relax and become passive about the situation. You, you shall live by the sword. You shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, the emphasis there is restless. When you grow restless, you will break this yoke off your neck. When you grow restless. Nigerians, when you grow restless, you will break this yoke off your neck. Let nobody deceive you and say prayer doesn't work. Prayer works. It works. Just one decision will change everything. Keep talking. Keep praying. Watch out, Africa. Watch out. The time is near. And when we eventually become liberated, we will testify. That we achieved this not by our power, not by our strength. I will end it here. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video.